Hello everyone, this is Pippin Williamson with Pippin's Pages and Pippin'sPlugins.com. And in this part four of writing your first WordPress plugin, I want to show you how to go about loading a style sheet that will then be loaded into your website uh, through your plugin that will allow you to, in this case, style the extra content that you've added with the plugin. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to look at styling this extra content that we've added in part one, two, and three. Um, is, this is a pretty simple method, but it's used uh, in a lot of cases. So what we're going to do is we're first going to open up our WordPress plugin that we have so far, and we're going to go over to our display functions, and we're going to go ahead and change this message to something a little bit more meaningful. We're also going to add in a paragraph tag that's going to allow us to target this one, this, uh, this message, with our CSS, and we're going to call it Twitter message. And then we're going to just say, follow me on... Uh, we're going to give it a, a link. So follow me on Twitter. Okay, uh, if we go ahead and look at this now, uh, we now have a new message down here that says follow me on Twitter, and we have Twitter uh, linked to twitter.com. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to actually load a style sheet that will allow us to style this message. So what we're going to first do is we're going to create our style sheet. Uh, so we create a brand new file, file, and let's just put in a style right here called Twitter message, and let's just give it a color of red. That's fine. And now we're going to save it. We're going to save it inside of a CSS folder. It's always good to keep your files separated into meaningful folders. Um, and now let's just call it plugin styles.css. Uh, okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our scripts.php file and we're going to write a function that's actually going to load this script onto our web page. Uh, so we're going to write a script called uh, my first WordPress plugin. We're using the prefix again. Load scripts. Just like that. And now we're going to use a function called wp on queue style. And this is the function that will actually uh, load the CSS directly into the head section of the WordPress site, uh, and it will do it all for us. So this, the, first prop, the first parameter of this function is actually the name that you want to give this CSS file. Um, note that every single time that you use this function, um, you need to give a unique name. Uh, if you have two names that are the same, one of them will get loaded, but the other one won't. Now, we're going to use a little function called plugin dir URL, and that will actually allow us to retrieve the URL or the file path to our current directory. Notice the PHP constant file here. Um, and then all we have to do is type in this slash uh, plugin underscore styles dot CSS. Okay, so that should be correct. Um, we won't know until we really test it. But now, that alone isn't going to do anything by itself. So what we have to do is we have to add in what's called an action hook. And this is something that's going to basically, um, at a certain time of loading during the WordPress loading system, uh, we're going to tell this function to fire, which is then going to load this. So we're going to use the hook called WP on queue scripts. And then the second parameter is going to be the name of our function that we just wrote above. Okay, so that should work right there. Uh, and if we go ahead and take a look at our page, uh, sure enough, we have our text is red. Uh, so if we view our page source, and let's just go ahead and do a search for MFWP, there it is, MFWPs-styles-css, and sure enough, there's our CSS file. Okay, uh, so that was pretty easy. Uh, and we can actually put anything in our CSS file that we want, just like normal. Uh, so let's say we want to give our paragraph tag a border. And let's put in some padding, just like that. Okay, cool. So we've now added a nicely styled, more or less, uh, message at the bottom of our post that we have styled. And we can do anything that we want to it now. Um, if we wanted, uh, you can style it however you want, really. Uh, it's up to you and your CSS. But this is something that you're going to use a lot of times when writing any sort of plugin that 
interacts with data or displays data on the front end of your website. Uh, this is a really simple way to load CSS directly into the website. Uh, and note that this right here will actually load it on all pages. Um, a really quick little tip, let's say that it, we want to only load this file when we're viewing a single post page. The reason I say that is because we're actually only displaying content when viewing a single post page. Remember the is single conditional. So what we actually can do is we can use those same conditionals right here and say if is single, load that script, and there we go. So if we go back over here, notice it works right here, but if we go to the about page, oops, get rid of that modal, and click view source, and do a search for it, you'll notice it's not found. See, zero of zero. Um, so that's something that you always want to do is to improve efficiency of your plugin. It should only ever load scripts, CSS or jQuery, when they are needed. So in this case, we need this one on all single post pages because that's when we're displaying this message. Um, if we were displaying it on pages, we would do something like this. If is page, and then is page. Now instead it's going to be displayed on the about page. And sure enough, there it is right there. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we can go over to any page that we want and we still see it. Um, so one thing that's really cool about this function, and that's mostly because of this action right here, is that all of our normal conditional tags work right here. Uh, we could use is underscore archive, we could do is search, we can do a variety of them. If we want, we can target both singular, single post pages and regular pages by using the is singular. So if we do that, like that, we'll see our message there. We will also see our message here. So that's a really quick um, roundup of how you're going to add a style sheet to your plugin. Uh, just a real, a few quick reminders. Number one. Let's look at our plugin structure. First of all, you remember that we have everything stored inside of an includes folder. And inside of our includes folder, we have individual files that are named appropriately. Display functions is contains the functions that use that we use to display data. Scripts is for loading scripts, CSS or jQuery. Data processing, we haven't got to that yet, uh, but if we are doing data processing, that's where the data processing would be. We have CSS files inside of our CSS folder. Now, in the next section, I'm going to show you how to do a little bit of jQuery. So we're going to have a JS folder. Um, and then inside of jQuery, we're going to have a new file called scripts.js or something like that. Um, so always stay organized. It helps a lot, especially when you begin uh, building much, much bigger plugins. Um, just an example, uh, let me show you this really quickly. My Easy Content Types plugin has um, dozens of files. So we go in here, and we have a couple files in the main, and then we have about 12 different files here, and then we also have all of our JS files, our images, and our CSS. So it keeps it really well organized, and it's really easy to find things. If you look at the, the file names for any of these, it's pretty easy to tell what each one of them does. This one's the widgets. This controls the exporting. This is our help documentation. This is for meta boxes. This is for post types and taxonomies. So it's pretty s easy to see what a plugin does or where it does things by maintaining a good file structure and file naming scheme. So anyway, that's it. That's how we're going to load CSS. Um, to give you an idea, loading JavaScript is very, very similar. Uh, it works almost exactly the same as this, and we're actually going to be building onto this function in the next part. So I hope you stay with me and you keep watching this, and I, I hope that I'm helpful in uh, helping you write your first WordPress plugin. Thanks for watching.